Good evening. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Tim's awake. It's good to see all of you here. It's a special evening. We're going to begin singing, challenging one another to rise up and to follow where the Lord leads. So would you stand as we sing together? Dear Father, thank you so much for letting us come here tonight. Thank you so much for our church. Thank you so much for our deacons. Thank you for our staff. Dear Lord, we just come to praise you, come to honor you in all that we do and all that we say. Dear Father, I, I pray especially for Jay and Cade. Dear Lord, thank you so much for their lives. Thank you, Father, for who they are and their walk with you. Lord, I ask you to be with them tonight. Give them the words to say. So we all know their testimony, dear God, is such a great testimony. Be with our deacons as we minister. 
to our families. Help us to be worthy, dear God, to serve you in such a special way, dear Lord. Thank you again for this time, dear Father. I ask that you bless it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jimmy. Earlier today, the deacons uh, convened an ordination council uh, during which both Cade and Jay offered their testimonies. Um, and the deacons uh, had an opportunity then to um, offer words of affirmation and support for Cade and for, for Jay and ask some questions. And um, at the end of that ordination council meeting, uh, a vote was taken by the council uh, to offer both of these first time deacons to the church uh, to be accepted. And so, I'm bringing now a motion in behalf of the Ordination Council um, to accept Jay Caldwell and Cade Bergen as deacons uh, at East Point Baptist Church. Uh, a second is not necessary because it's coming from a council, and so we'll go ahead and call for the vote now. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Any opposition? And there is none. And so they are our two newest deacons at East Point. Church, it is my honor and blessing tonight to be able to share the charge from God's word to us uh, as we uh, seek uh, to affirm God's call upon uh, not only uh, Jay, uh, and Cade, uh, but uh, also with a call of God upon their wives, at, uh, Brittany uh, and also Mallory. Uh, we are uh, so grateful uh, for others and great testimony that we have heard throughout the day. Uh, as I charge you, church, this is such a blessed time uh, for the church family. Uh, it, is a, it is a sweet time. Of, of fellowship where we recognize the Holy Spirit at work through the church uh, to move upon the hearts of his people uh, to select, according to God's word, uh, men who will uh, serve, uh, literally be a fellowship uh, and, and serve for the glory of God. Uh, this, uh, this most important uh, place of service uh, is found in the book of Acts chapter 6, and so I would ask you to listen along with me uh, as, I, as I read from God's Word. In Acts chapter 6, uh, beginning in verse 1, it says, In those days, as the disciples were increasing in number, there arose a complaint by the Hellenistic Jews against the Hebraic Jews that their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution. The twelve summoned the whole company of the disciples and said it would not be right for us to give up preaching the word of God to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and wisdom, whom we can appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And this proposal pleased the whole company. So they, they chose these, these men that were full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And then the apostles had them stand before them, and they prayed, they laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly in number, and a large group of priests became obedient to the faith. As we think about the growth of this early church, and the instigation of the deacons really were born out of a problem. They were born out of a problem. The problem that occurred as a result of uh, the growth that was happening. And in the DNA of the early church, and still a part of the DNA of the church today, uh, was uh, that of love and unity. And so there was a problem that was disrupting the love and the unity. 
As a matter of fact, if we were really to, uh, to look uh, with a focused lens on the problem, it really was jealousy and, and pride. And, and so there were those that were being neglected and they're seeing the other things that were going on. And so there was a, an obvious problem. And so in the midst of this, the Spirit of God, working through the apostles, uh, shared with the church the need uh, to appoint uh, those that would literally uh, serve tables, that they would serve as a fellowship of deacons. And these deacons would then serve and maintain the unity, literally, in the bond of peace. So really uh, the beginning and the instigation was that of being peacemakers, uh, really problem solvers. That was, that was the instigation of, of deacons. And so following that instigation and that time was, was also in a, an initiation and in verse 3, uh, listen to what the Word of God says. It says, And brothers and sisters, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Spirit and wisdom, and appoint them to this duty. I mean, when we think about uh, Cade and, and uh, we also think about Jay, we, we recognize these same qualities that, that are in, in their life. Uh, that they are uh, men of good reputation, uh, that, they're, that they're blameless. In other words, when they throw the mud, uh, that it doesn't stick. Good reputation. Full of the Holy Spirit. What, what does that mean? It means that, uh, that the control of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit is evident in their life. The church has witnessed that. The Spirit at work in the church and witnessing that in their life. And then there is uh, also wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to be able to, to apply knowledge, and that is uh, certainly the evident qualities that we see in both of these two candidates. I would say that also we see this in their wives. In the testimony earlier tonight uh, with uh, the ordination council in a time of testimony as they uh, shared the question about uh, their wives and the help meet and, and the calling of God, how God brought you together. And, and uh, thank you for sharing that. And uh, we are so thankful for uh, those two that God has made one uh, that will serve uh, with uh, integrity of heart and skill of hand. So that was the initiation. And then there is the integration that begins to take place. In, in verse 4 it says, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And so the apostles were not above that or beyond that. It was a sense of priority. And it was an understanding that, that we needed to hear from God before uh, we did anything else. And so in order to meet the needs, to serve those tables, to serve people, and to meet those needs ultimately so that uh, those apostles could devote themselves to prayer and, and to the study of the word of God. Uh, why is that so important? Because everything flows out of our theology or our doctrine. And the doctrine is based uh, according to God's word. The grass withers and the flower fades, but it is the word of the Lord that will endure forever. And so we don't have to guess about uh, our assignment or the next steps and what that should be because God has given us that in his word. And to hear from God and then to follow him. And so they came together. And what I love about uh, the verse there in verse 4 is it says that they, they bonded together in order to use these gifts. Each one of the servants that God has placed here have unique gifts. Uh, I, I noticed the other night when we had our, our first uh, deacons meeting with uh, a few more uh, that had been added. When we looked around the room, uh, people of all ages and all backgrounds and all types, all types of gifts that God has given these men. And the purpose of that is to, to come together and to use those gifts in order to build up the church. And so church, uh, that is the purpose. 
and then it pleased them. And so there was unity and blessing of God. That's the result, is that they came together, and then the word of God spread. The word of God spread. And so, church, I charge you, according to the word of God, as God has moved on your heart to select these men to serve, along with their wives and, of course, children, that you will join with me to pray for them consistently. They will have uh, intense spiritual warfare that they will engage in that will be greater than what they have experienced before. And church, it is our responsibility to engage in that spiritual warfare through prayer. And so I charge you, along with me, to be people of prayer to pray for these men, to pray for their spouses, to pray for their family. I also charge us before God to encourage, encourage. Many times as they serve, there will be courage that will go out. They will encounter situations and, and circumstances that uh, they maybe don't know exactly what to do, and they'll call on other men and other people, and, and, um, and they'll make mistakes. Uh, they'll make mistakes just like you do, and uh, they will do that. They have clay feet. They're not perfect. As a matter of fact, they're broken men and women that are making themselves available to God. And so use opportunities as you have opportunity to encourage them. Encourage them. Befriend them. Be a friend. Be a, be a blessing to them and be a, be a true friend. Support them. And then as they seek to lead, and there will be times when they will be called upon to, to lead, and I ask you to, to be submissive to that leadership. Now, I know when I mention that, that sounds like a bad word in our day. It is not. The word submit needs to be under the mission. And so God is, he's given us this mission together. And we are, we are following that mission, those that God has placed, like me and others, all of us together. And when we submit, when we submit to his mission, and we're following his mission, and the authority that, that God has given here, then when we submit, it means to be under the mission of God. And so I, I challenge and I charge you, East Point Baptist Church to respect and to follow their leadership. If you're willing to do that, I'm going to ask if you will uh, to, to just uh, take your hand and just place your hand forward just like this in a few moments. Just like that, that's right. I'm going to lead us in prayer, and then after I lead us in prayer, uh, Joe Stinson, who is a chair of our deacons would come and bring the charge uh, to our candidates. Father, thank you that you have blessed with the church. The church is your bride. The church, uh, compared to a building, compared to uh, a body, it's your church. We are thankful that the sweetest thing this side of heaven is your church and the fellowship of your church. We commit as your church tonight, as you have affirmed the call on these men and women, their life, to serve East Point Baptist Church. We affirm and we confirm together tonight that call. We also pray for, for them together. That they, that they will be exactly what you want them to be. And we also submit to your authority to be the kind of people that will be, be the kind of sheep that, that, will, that you, will, you will lead us and guide us and be, be that which goes before us and comes behind us, that you will be glorified in this service and your mission. And it is in the name of Jesus, the name above every name that we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you so much. As uh, Joe comes to share the charge to our deacon candidates, I want you to know what a joy and a blessing it is for me to be able to have this moment uh, with Joe uh, and also with his family, with uh, Catherine and uh, these boys. Uh, Joe reminded me of the ordination council uh, at Pine Grove Baptist Church. Uh, that we had an opportunity to be a part of as, as God did the very thing that he is doing with you, Jay and Cade, uh, all those years ago. And so uh, written in the back of his Bible was uh, the ordination council, and uh, we shared a little bit about that moment in time as those guys back in that day put them on the hot seat, and it was, it was a hot seat for Joe. Uh, but I want to affirm... God's call all these years ago. I, I wouldn't take anything back for that. Lay hands on no one suddenly, the Bible tells us. And then it's just a moment that's a God moment. And we didn't do that. God did it. And God is good. And so, Joe, you come and share the charge to our, to our candidate. Pray with me, please. Father, thank you so much for bringing us here together tonight. Thank you most of all for Jay and Cade. Thank you for their families. Lord, I, I pray as we, uh, as we do what you've called us to do tonight, Lord, to lay hands on them, to set them apart. Father, I pray that you will consecrate them to the gospel ministry. I pray that I pray that they will be your faithful servants as they have been. I pray that they'll continue for the rest of their life, Lord. Father, I pray that you'll watch over them and their families, keep them close to you and keep them clean, and use them, Lord, to, uh, to minister to your fellowship here, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tim, for, for delivering the charge to the body for us. Um, Jay and Kate, would y'all stand up, please? I, I'm going to put you in the hot seat like I was one time. Timothy J. Caldwell and Kate Allen Bergen, I charge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and according to the word of God that you be reverent, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, and to hold the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. The word says that you shall be the husband of one wife and that you will rule over your children and your houses well. Remember that your wives and children are your first priority according to God's word. Don't forget. Don't neglect them for any reason ever. I charge you, both of you, to enter into this time of ordination, realizing the gravity of the moment. Romans eleven twenty nine says, For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Once set apart for the gospel ministry, you remain so for life. The blessings, the pure joy, the responsibilities, and the accountability will be yours forever, even if you no longer want it. Jay and Cade, <clears throat> if you understand this charge uh, uh, and wish to continue, I would ask that you would come forward and be seated right here for the, for the laying on of hands ceremony. Um, all our deacons and ordained men, if y'all would... If y'all would come down front, and uh, I, I'll lead us in the line, and maybe start the line right over here, and uh, and we'll pray over these men, and uh, and set them apart.
Mallory, Mallory and John Cade and Leif, would you, would you join us here in the front? And then uh, Brittany, if you will make your way this way. Sorry, sorry Leif, uh, we're almost there. We, we feel the same way. What a blessing. Uh, the, the scripture does tell us that, um, and uh, you guys can stand, you can stand, we're, we're going to join you together, and, and then church, uh, the scripture says that this, that this pleased the church, and ultimately it pleased the Lord, and we know that because of the unity and the bond of peace that would follow, and so we have experienced that tonight. Uh, church, we want to give you an opportunity to come by and just extend uh, the blessing and, and um, just speak a word that God may have on your heart to this, these great families. And so I'd ask you to stand with me. And then, uh, Tim, if you will come and uh, close uh, us with prayer, that will conclude our services for tonight. Okay, nope. let's pray. Father, thank you for Jay and for Cade, Father, and their commitment to your church, your kingdom. We ask that you hold them and their families in the palm of your hand, Father. We ask that you guide them in all that they do. And again, thank you for their commitment to your people. Thank you for each man that was here tonight, Father, to lay hands on them and pray. We ask that you, you uh, take their prayers, Father, and, and that you use them that you use Cade and Jay. Thank you for everyone that's here tonight. We ask that you be with us as we go our separate ways. Let each of us be a light in your kingdom, Father, so that we can continue to grow your kingdom here at East Point. Thank you especially for your son, Jesus, and for all he means to each one of us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.